Broadcasting from Slough. Streaming around the world. This is Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Playing the music you want to hear. The Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Hello and welcome to episode 151 of the podcast, the best bits of the Atom Radio breakfast show, harvested delicately from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday's show. Who am I trying to kid? Just delve in and pick out anything that's half decent. That's what happens to put together this podcast. This week, a slightly longer one over the next 20 minutes or so, we have the perfect weather. In my opinion, anyway, and it's my show, so we often get my opinion. Uh, We have illogical, annoying things, graphics that are clearly unclear. We have a removing, annoying cretins, think M25 this week, not once, not twice, but thrice. Uh, We also have annoyances to do with food or drink, all sparked by something which was asked of me and is an absolute no. Plus, we have What Would You Want Out of a Life Reshuffle. All that and more on the way. Atomradio.co.uk I have to say, right, I, I may have said over the course of the summer that it was a little bit too hot on occasion, and I stand by that, okay? Right, I make no, make no apology for that. Like 30, 31, 32, 33 too hot if you're just going about your normal day-to-day business if you're lying on a beach right next to the sea on holiday with nothing to do i'm sure it's grand but like i just want to say i thought saturday was lush 21 degrees nice little breeze sun was out the sky was blue i don't really think you can ask for any more than that if i'm honest from the the weekend it'll do for me and if i could have that every single day I would be happy. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Online, on mobile, on smart speaker. Morning and welcome to Monday. It is Mark Denham at breakfast at 14 minutes to 7 o'clock. If you are a gamer, you can thank history on this day in 1985. Nintendo's Super Mario Brothers game first appeared. Can't believe it is actually that old. I may have to dig out my N64 later and have a little go at Mario Kart and all that. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Today, I did want to talk to you about something I've now decided that we'll talk about something else. And I went shopping on Saturday and uh, clothes shopping I went. And you know how when you go in there, it's all hung up and that. Well, you see, there's something that really, really bugs me. And if you were to come around and look in my wardrobe, you will see all of my clothes that are on hangers. All the hangers, the uh, hook goes over from the front and the clothes are all front facing left, right? I can't stand if the wardrobe and that is mixed up. And I was looking at the clothes in this shop and it was really making me feel uneasy because although the majority were the way that I would have had them uh, hook over the front and front facing left, There were some that had the hook over the back and there were some that were front facing right. And this really, really, really bugged me far more, in fact, than it should, because it's really not even my business. It's not my wardrobe. It's a clothes rack in a shop. Anyway, that inspires me to ask today what that should not bothers you far more than it should. On air at atomradio.co.uk, my email address if you'd like to get involved this morning, much like the coat hangers for me. What bothers you more than it should? Mark Denham, Denham. Morning then, Tuesday it is, it's 6.14. This is Mark Denham on atomradio.co.uk. Tune in Radio Box Streamer, Smart Speaker and iTunes Radio. I was looking online yesterday and I saw a, a thing Boris Johnson will be announcing this week his COVID plans for the winter. And it says, what's out and what's in in Boris Johnson's COVID winter plan? Now they've got a picture of PCR tests out, uh, NHS app, question mark. Uh, There are pictures of face masks, question mark, in schools uh, and ticks, COVID vaccines, ticks, and somebody chatting on the phone, question mark. So apparently you may be banning that. The one that really gets me is apparently there's a picture of three cyclists going over a bridge with a cross on it. Therefore, according to that picture, the PM plans to announce 
a ban on cycling this winter. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Yesterday, a group, a new group calling themselves Insulate Britain, blocked many points of the M25, either entry slip roads or indeed the carriageway itself, in a fresh round of climate protests. This happened around 8 a.m., so massively impacting the morning rush hour. And it took the police around four hours to get all of them out the way and all of the roads open again. So this, this is what I ask you today. Do you sympathize with them or more likely, how would you have removed them if you were able to remove them? This is because yesterday I looked down my Facebook news feed and uh, Twitter timeline and everyone just said, like, just keep driving, which obviously is not an actual solution. You can't just keep driving at them because then you would probably be up on a murder charge given that you would have killed them, no doubt, right? So that's not an answer this morning. I ask you, though, how would you have dealt with getting rid of them if you needed to get rid of them? First one this morning, Mick. Hello, Mick. Uh, Morning, Marky. This, thankfully, didn't impact me, but as a professional driver, my time driving is money and four hours sat doing nothing is four hours earning absolutely nothing, meaning I'd have to work four hours longer. So I probably would have been among those who got out and tried to drag them out of the way, if I'm honest. Thing is though, mate, you'd have been outnumbered, wouldn't you? That's the thing, you would have been outnumbered, and therefore you may very well have struggled to drag them out of the way. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Morning, Tessa. I would just chuck buckets of cold water on them to get them out the way. They have absolutely no right to be there. One question, Tessa. You're sat in traffic on the M25, right? And all of a sudden, you get stopped by some protesters running out and sitting on the road in front of you. And you do an emergency stop. Where do you get the buckets of water from? But it's a fair question, isn't it? Where do the buckets of water come from? That would be what I'd ask you. I don't think it's a problem in any way whatsoever other than the fact where would you have the buckets of cold water from uh unless hang on unless tessa you work for the fire service and your fire truck had been recently filled up then maybe you'd be in business Denham on atom radio that's me and that's where i am it is 808 it is tuesday morning hello good morning i do hope you are fine fit and well And I hope you are ready and prepared for the school run today. I have to say, like people who complain about the school run traffic, you're the ones causing it. Uh, I just don't want to state the obvious there, but you are though, aren't you? Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Morning, John. Hope you're well. I love John's suggestion. And I don't even know that it's illegal, to be honest. Uh, John says... What about those crop duster planes that can, uh, that have been used for firefighting, where they fly over and they just release a deluge of water? Imagine that though, there they are, camping out on the M25, and one of those crop duster planes comes down. Could be a bit tricky, this one, John, around junction 14 for Heathrow, mind you. But this crop duster plane flies over, comes down, and empties a deluge of water over them. Surely that would be enough to get them moving. Morning, 625 Atom Radio Online on mobile on smart speaker. You will now soon be able to tell somebody whether they are young, okay or old. They've had one jab or no jabs, they're young. If they've had two jabs, they're okay. And if they've had three jabs, they're old. Plans announced yesterday to start jabbing the over 50s. Uh, from, uh, well, soon, anyway. Uh, They're going to do it at the same time as you get your flu jab, which means you'll get your COVID jab in one arm and a dead arm, and your flu jab in the other and a dead arm. Now, I know they're both a benefit, but why can't they just go in the same arm together and you get a doubly dead one arm, and at least you'd have one okay arm? That would make a lot of sense to me, but then I don't make decisions. What I do do is play the anthems like Bonnie Tyler on Atom Radio. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. I want to talk to you today about charity shops. I was walking down the high street yesterday morning, and I saw a lady heading into a charity shop, and she was dragging behind her four bin bags. I have no idea what was in it, but I'm guessing clothes because they looked a bit soft and fluffy and that. Uh, And she was dragging these into the charity shop. 
And she looked a she looked a very well dressed lady. So I'm imagining that there is some decent clobber in amongst those bags of stuff that she took into the charity shop yesterday. Therefore, I would like to ask you today, what is the best bargain you've ever got in a charity shop or the wackiest thing that you've ever, ever got in a charity shop? Now, I I love where I live. I live in Slough, perfectly happy with where I live. But then I would always say if I was going to a charity shop, I'd be more likely to go to Windsor or Marlow. Work that out for yourself. Uh, but what I will say is, once walking past a, uh, I tried to buy a laptop bag and I couldn't find the bag that I wanted with enough pockets in it. Walking past a charity shop window, I found a 60 quid laptop bag and got it for £4. Result, bargain. What is the best ever bargain you have got at a charity shop? On air at atomradio.co.uk is my email address this morning. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to do, Tim's was the second one in, and then before the news at eight, we had one from Sammy as well, which is quite funny. So I'm going to go through those now. If you would like to get involved, on air at atomradio.co.uk for the biggest bargain that you've ever got from a charity shop. Sammy says, I saw this amazing jumper, like a woolly sweater, in the window of a charity shop, and I thought it looked a little bit big, and I bought it there on the spot. Now, it was a 50 quid jumper that I got for a tenner, and it was a bargain, and I wore it, and all my friends said to me, it's too big, Sam, it's too big. And in the end, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to have to take it back. But then I thought, I can't bear the embarrassment of donating it back to the charity shop I bought it from. So I ended up buying it from one charity shop and donating it to a charity shop at the other end of town. Oh, dear. Do you know, I do know a friend who bought a pair of uh, ice skates secondhand. They were a bargain, absolute bargain. A size four, they were. Only trouble is, she's a six. I asked her why she bought them. Well, they were only 20 quid, she said. This from Tim, though. I think this may steal the day. Tim says the biggest bargain I ever got from a charity shop would be my wife. Tim was in a charity shop dropping some stuff off for his mum and it was quiet and he got talking to the lady in there as she started sorting through the stuff that he was bringing in from his mum. He got talking to her and they swapped numbers and they started dating and now here they are, seven years on, happily married. I don't think, Tim, if I'm honest, I don't think anyone is ever going to get a bigger bargain than their life partner from a charity shop. That's amazing. Should you get involved? On air at atomradio.co.uk is my email address for the biggest bargain you've ever got from a charity shop. Mark Denham, Denham. Atomradio.co.uk Just thinking back to 1915 when the first Women's Institute opened in Britain. Who on earth made up the name Clanfair Willy Goggery Churandrandrabwob Will and Silly Go Go Go? Was it just a drunk person? Ah, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll call it that. And the next morning they woke up. What the hell have I done? Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Yesterday, somebody very, very cheekily asked me if they could dunk their biscuit in my cup of tea. And this mortified me, if I'm honest. Now, I, I uh, offered them their own cup of tea and they said, no, thank you. Can I have a glass of water? Right? Not a problem. I gave them a glass of water and I made myself a cup of tea and all is well, right? And then I said, do you want a biscuit? Oh, yes, please. So they take a biscuit and then like lean over towards my cup. Do you mind if I dunk my biscuit? Yes, I do. Greatly mind if you dunk your biscuit in my tea. I cannot stand soggy crumbs and that in my tea. It's just not me by any stretch of the imagination. I can't stand it. Like, you know, I I know that I'm a little bit different in that I will have my cereal with a glass of milk, but I will eat the cereal dry and drink the milk wet. I will have a cup of tea and I will have a biscuit. The biscuit will not get dunked in the tea. And therefore, if I don't dunk my own biscuit in a cup of tea, I'm certainly not going to dunk anybody else's or let them dunk their biscuit in my tea. With all that said, my question to you today now is... What is the most annoying food or drink related thing that anyone in your circle does? We're talking family, uh, friends, colleagues and stuff like that. What is the most annoying thing, food or drink related 
that anyone in your circle does. On air at atomradio.co.uk this Thursday morning. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Lucy emails on air at atomradio.co.uk. Morning, Lucy. How are you today? Hope very well is the answer. Lucy says, at work we have a very small team and we therefore take it in turn to do the tea run. And one of the things I did not miss whilst working from home was one of the people in my team doing the tea run because having watched them do it, they put the milk in before the water. So when they make the tea, they boil the kettle and then in the cups they will put the tea bag, the sugar, if anyone is having sugar, and then the milk. Then when the kettle boils, they top it up with the uh, the hot water and they make the tea. And it just doesn't taste the same as if you do it the other way and put the milk in last. And that's one thing I did not miss while working from home. I had to make my own tea and that was fine, but at least I could do it with the water going in before the milk. Now, Lucy, I agree with you on this. There are like two things in a house or certainly in a house or maybe an office or whatever that are heinous that you can do. One of those is hanging the toilet roll so it comes out the bottom and down the back rather than hanging it so it comes over the front and down that way. That would be a no-no. And the other is making tea with the milk going in. If you're making tea, you have to brew it with boiling water. It's just the law. You have to brew tea with boiling water. It is the law. If you put the milk in, therefore, when the uh, water hits the milk, it instantly gets cooled and you're not brewing it with hot water. So Lucy's colleague stop it why would you do this lucy's colleague i mean whoever taught you to make tea would be the question it's just it's 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 not the done thing mark denham denham past if you will your mind back to yesterday and yesterday i had a bit of a rant did i not about my friend asking to dunk uh, her biscuit in my tea which is an absolute no-no. And that then brought about the question yesterday, which was, what is the most annoying food or drink-related thing that you have to endure from any of your friends or your colleagues or your family, etc., etc., etc.? And there were some fairly annoying ones in there. But then yesterday, after the school run, my son says to me, Daddy, I want McDonald's. And this then brought about uh, the realisation of one of my most annoying food drink related bugbears it really did because i thought well if he's having mcdonald's i may as well have mcdonald's as well so i ordered myself a um ordered myself a double cheeseburger customized it to my liking and ordered myself a uh, a chicken sandwich meal thing as well uh customized that to my liking went to pick my drink and then i thought oh no no, 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 no. Because I was considering a chocolate milkshake and I thought, the straw. Now, I know it's for the environment and that, but those straws, those straws are absolutely horrible now that they are like the papery, cardboardy type straws. Because what tends to happen now is that when you drink your milkshake, the straw just collapses. And by the time you get about halfway through your milkshake, your straw's collapsed and you can't get any more of it. There's a bugbear. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Streaming from Slough, playing the music you want to hear. This is Atom Radio. It's Mark Denham at breakfast at a quarter past seven on a Friday morning. You may notice somebody near you this morning is drunk. At any given time, 0.7% of the world population is drunk, meaning that globally right now, at least 50 million people are drunk. And now you know why. When you see that person early in the morning, you think, how on earth are they drunk? Now you know why. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio playing the music you want to hear. It is Mark Denham at breakfast on a Friday morning. Yesterday was 100 days until Christmas. Yesterday, I got a message from a friend of mine mid-afternoon saying, Mark, as it's 100 days until Christmas, does this mean I can expect to listen in tomorrow and hear a Christmas song? Absolutely not not december yet is it mark denham on atom radio atom radio happy hour on the way at nine whole hour all about the 80s this morning first though today we're asking if you could be involved in some real world reshuffle like the cabinet reshuffle where today you could just say right mark today you're presenting breakfast on atom radio and on monday you will be doing 
what would your choice of what you will be doing be? And I love this email from Stacey on air at atomradio.co.uk. If you'd like to get involved like Stacey has done. Stacey says, I would love to be, as of Monday, a scientist in the hope that I can invent something that gets my name and I will be forever remembered as well as doing good. I like how she's put that a bit on the end as well, as well as doing good. Stacy, that's an amazing thought. That really is, as well as doing good. Uh, that is an amazing thought. Yeah, I don't know what you do now because you've not said, but, you know, like if you could if you could invent something and put your name to it, I mean, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Like, think of the things, like the, the Dyson. If you could invent something, you know, like discover something. Imagine if you were to be discovering the breakthrough to cancer or Alzheimer or dementia, uh, dementia even, and it took your name. Imagine that, Stacey. It'd be amazing. Good luck to you on that. I wish you the best of luck. And hopefully there will be some real-life cabinet reshuffle over the weekend and Stacey becomes a scientist and becomes famous. Atomradio.co.uk Just a thought, should Stacey go on to develop a, you know, an amazing cure because she gets magically reshuffled into a scientist or whatever. Uh, do I get some form of finder's fee for coming up with the idea of this real-life reshuffle? I'm just wondering. Like, I don't want to steal your glory, Stacey. You can have the name in that. I'll just settle for the finder's fee. That would be uh, that would be all good. And where do you stand on the dunking of biscuits? Now, I know, obviously, coronavirus and that would make it a no right now. But before coronavirus... Would you have let someone else dunk their biscuit in your tea? Now, I, I don't really care, coronavirus or not, there would be no dunking of biscuits in my tea. Not my biscuits, not anybody's biscuits would be being dunked in my tea. Anyway, now that I've finished ranting about biscuits and tea and dunking and all that, I should thank you for listening, especially if you've got this far as well as we hit 22 minutes Thank you so much for checking out episode 151 of the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and then next week you'll get a notification in your podcast app. Atom Radio oh yeah. Playing the music you want to hear Another week of Early Alarm starts on Monday. Join me from 6 o'clock till 10 Monday to Friday on atomradio.co.uk Tune in radio player, streamer, smart speaker and of course iTunes Radio. Atom.